Come to a meeting, like Tahoe. Come to a meeting, like Tahoe. Come to a meeting. Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, April 12th, 2023 at 2 p.m. I am calling the meeting of the Public Art Committee to order in City Hall second floor media room. Um, we have a new member with us today, Sonia McGrath. Sonia, would you like to give a little brief overview of your artistic um, accomplishments? Yeah, sure. So my husband and I, we've been living in Tarpon Springs for the last year and a half. And about two years ago, I left um, a successful corporate career behind and decided to pursue my love for painting. I'm a canvas artist. My medium is clay, um, clay chalk paint, mm -hmm. um, which always catches people by surprise because nobody does that. Well, artists, the furniture painting artists are also doing that now. Mm -hmm. And um, acrylics. And it's been going well. I'm a, I'm a member of the um, Tarpon Art Guild mm -hmm. as of now April, and my work is on exhibition there. Very nice. And, um, yeah, I'm just glad to have this opportunity to work with you all and see what happens. Right. Well, we welcome can. aboard. Thank yeah, you welcome. so much. Welcome. Yes. Thanks. Megan, mm -hmm. will you call the roll, please? Ms. Christopoulos. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Stackhouse. Here. Ms. McGrath. Yes. Ms. Wood. Here. Chair Jennings. Here. And uh, Dawn Arbatello is absent and excused. And Nick. And Nick. Oh, and Nick is absent and excused. Thank you. Okay, we have no guests. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of meeting minutes from our March 8th, 2023. Do I hear a motion to approve? I Robert, so make a motion to approve the meetings, the the, uh, uh, the minutes. The minutes. Okay. Can I get a second? Sure. Yes. Graham, is there any discussion? Any comments? Corrections? Um, I thought that during the discussion under new business, when we were talking about. Um, a public art plan that we brought up the proposal to have um, workshops and that we had asked Diane to see if she could facilitate that. But my memory may be completely at fault and at variance with reality. It sometimes is. I, oh, I read that they all about workshops. I mm -hmm. have not um, got a date at present for a workshop but I will definitely get that to you all. So you recall there being some discussion? About there was, it does mention that in here. Mm -hmm. Am I reading that wrong? Mm -hmm. that there, I wasn't here, but it does say just the workshop. Yeah. The Online workshop service. is for what purpose? Um, for a long-term plan for the Public Art Committee so that um, um, in particular, as we've had a fair turnover of members in the past year or two, that new members can be brought up to speed very quickly by acquainting them with the the plan and where we are on it. So are you um, advising that we, we'll, at this workshop, will be revising the master plan? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. When was, uh, do it, you know offhand, Diane, when it was last revised? Not offhand, no. Uh, I think it was about two years ago. Yeah. Mm. So maybe, um, if everyone wants to uh, get a copy of it, Megan, maybe you can mail everybody uh, a copy of the latest. Yeah, okay. Be in your notebooks. Yeah. 
in right. Your and then we could project. review the master yeah. plan and see what, if any, work it needs. Yeah. Okay. At, at a workshop. And what okay. day of the yeah. week? Yeah. What it, day of the week and what time is best? So it just kind of narrows it down for me with since all of you are here. Right. So yes. last week in April is bad for me because I'm going to be. I won't in be an, in town either. Right. I'll be in and out of hospitals. So. Um. Beaver, you're going to be not here for some period. In July. In All July. July. Mm -hmm. Okay. Part of me will be here. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be All right. That'll be interesting. <laughs> I'm asking is like, are Wednesdays good, afternoons, mornings? Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday, for the most Tuesday. part, sure. Yeah. Wednesday. For the most part, Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays Wednesday. are my only days that I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I said for the most part Wednesdays and Fridays are the only days I can do anything. Okay, okay well, good. I, All so right. Makes we'll look for a Wednesday Friday. then. Mm -hmm. Okay, but your comments don't impact the meet, the accuracy of the minutes, is that correct? <coughs> um, that would appear to be correct, yes. I okay. should move that proposal to new business later. Okay. Thank you. All so right. the minutes are, are correct. All right. So, all in favor of uh, accepting the minutes as submitted, say aye. 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 Uh, I guess that was unanimous. Hi, Stephen. Hello there. Okay. Um, our artist for the Black Heritage Project, Stephen Oliver, has just entered the room. Thank you, Stephen. And you, your timing is impeccable. Because <laughs> the next agenda item is the Black Heritage Project. You're moving quickly, right or along. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Sure. I'll start by saying I had a wonderful National Bakery cup of Greek coffee here. Mm -hmm. Apparently, your fortune can be told too, so it was good at the end. But in any case, um, uh, where I'm at, or where we're at, I think is um, the committee did, I think, a great job in terms of that whole community aspect and building up. There's a lot of legwork, as you all well know, to to get the project going, mm -hmm. and the site uh, has been a little bit nebulous, but I believe that the process is leading us in the right direction. And along the way, I think we've gathered good information that can be useful. Um, what I did was um, I kind of, after the last meeting, um, I think it was a smart thing to try to build more consensus. I think it's the time to build a consensus of what's happening. It's just it's stretching right. out a little bit. But it's a good to get the consensus. So the idea that there's not a split vote on the commissioners is good. And in the process, I mean, I, that night I also spoke to Tina, who was there, uh, a couple other people. And then I sat back and I thought about it. Mm -hmm. And um, everyone wanted visibility, which is a good thing. Some had some safety concerns, like yourself, too. And I basically stepped back and looked at it. <laughs> and I said, hey, wait a minute. And I, I, I reconsidered. You know, when the first time I did, wasn't sure about the site, I was just like, rather than be like nervous about it, I just, let me just go and survey the whole street. That'll I'll know. Right. And I revisited that along with Athens Avenue, which I had was my first thought. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of looked at it all over again with kind of fresh eyes. And I also realized I kind of needed to, in order to accommodate the sculpture better, I actually needed to back up and rethink it. Still got all the elements in it. And I want to, talk about that too because that, that's really important to remember because there's an incentive to having this finish there. Um, but essentially I figured a smaller footprint makes it much easier to mm -hmm. do this in three sites that I looked at. The original one between the trees because when I went back there you had concerns about people in the driveway. There's some legitimacy there and then viewing from the street. So I you know when I looked back there and I went back with a shovel last week I said hmm you know a smaller footprint would actually be better in precaution wise with the roots of those trees. Mind you, if it does somehow go there, I just measured it. That's the widest Median. part. Median. That's the trolley stop, I'm, right? right? Okay. I'm gonna work my way up the street. Um, that is the widest area in the street. It's 33 feet wide, I just measured it. 33, yeah, 33 feet wide versus 22 further down uh, the road. So the idea of the hazard, there's a little legitimacy, but the fact that the matter is it's, it's, there's, a, there's ability to pass a little bit there, and there's, I don't think it's as bad as when I looked at Athens, which I thought was a great vista down the street. That's the next. Um, when I went there and looked at it technically, putting my architect's hat on, and I saw the drainage uh, infrastructure going underneath there, Tina actually told me that it's pretty, and I understood when she said that's why that's there, because it's a 
very flood prone area, mm -hmm. but you've got um, a lot of electrical infrastructure, including a big transformer that's hidden in there. There's three potholes. <laughs> there's, there's parking that inadvertently kind of happens along that curb. Um, Anastasi, who actually met him <laughs> last week. Um, and, uh, and there's access to those uh, sponge boats. Right. Working waterfront, as Tina pointed out. Mm -hmm. So we want to try to allow them to, to service their boats and also lay out their sponges. Things happen, like even festivals happen. So all I was soaking all that in. So anyway, when I got to Athens and really looked at it, I said, you know what, there's this little piece of paper that's it's kind of like, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's cockeyed, but 45 degrees, it's rotated. I could squeeze it there, but it's not ideal because there's a hydrant about four or five feet, look, about four feet away. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm afraid that, like, say anything happens and the infrastructure has to be dealt with there, or the fire department or the, or the sponge boats, I'm um, getting in the way of somebody and, and costing maybe, you know, do we have to take, move the thing around and that, that's costly. So moving along to the next site, which was the one I saw a while ago, and it's, um, it's west of the sponge dock, uh, the diver sculpture, mm -hmm. by 50 feet actually. And it's east of um, the, 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 the historic marker by 60 feet. So it's right in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. And it's centered between li two light posts. When I first found this site, it was my whole survey of the waterfront. And I said, oh, there's three pavers about five, six feet long that would fit that initial sculpture. Mm -hmm. Again, taking everybody into consideration, I said, oh, but if I, including what Tina mentioned, she mentioned to me that they do festivals and that's one of their few areas for tabling. I said, if I reduce that footprint again, I can put that in there mm -hmm. right in the middle, gives more breathing room between the light posts. It's almost equidistant between the both historic sponge divers monuments. Doesn't challenge the scale as much. And um, so I thought that was ideal. And then, then uh, there's a light pole with electric and the Tarpon Springs Public Art Committee banner on it <laughs> <laughs> right there. And it's across from the sponge exchange. I'm like, you know, so I start to, you know, review all this and, 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 and think about well, if you've got people visiting and that's kind of the heart of the district and they are having that whole experience, they literally have uh, all those three things lined up and there's enough breathing space between so they can process, mm -hmm. plus they're crossing the sponge exchange. In addition to that, Diane had mentioned that marketing you know, boost. So I think you could still do that and then you kind of, it's like a win-win. You get like the, the on the ground pedestrian benefit and you get the marketing. So anyway, that was my real site of choice when I looked at it just objectively. Mm -hmm. And just quickly about the sculpture, the, uh, and I remember the call was always about the intent <coughs> to have uh, you know, the, the rapport addressed between the Greek and the uh, Bahamian and Afro-American you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sponge divers. So there's uh, the panel, basically all the elements are still in the sculpture. It's seen as a, in the round versus passing through, and they're kind of like, it's symmetrical in a fun, fun way where you're going to see references and cross references. You're going to see um, nobody. I mean, along the whole sponge deck, there's nothing that shows anything that looks like what a sponge live sponge looks like, unless you go into maybe inside the exhibit somewhere. Mm -hmm. So the colorful that colorfulness is going to be in there. I want to incorporate still um, topographic maps of the water. You know, again, something that's not necessarily thought of. <laughs> maps of the town. Some of those are, are older. And then, of course, vintage photographs, which include um, the Greek and, and African-American spongers. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea emphasized that connection and build on the history. So, and because we have the link to Union Academy, that enables that flushing out of more of the, you know, mm -hmm. I think in the way its fate has turned out to be like my Greek cup of coffee, good, <laughs> <laughs> the good fortune. The end. Um, that's what I think uh, in the end. Uh, so um, anyway, I've I've um, oh, in the process okay. of drawing up that uh, new rendition, just detailing it now, Damn. and um, mm. I imagine um, if you want me to do any you know uh, adjustments to what I sent you and Diane, I don't know if everyone's seen it yet. I can tweak it in advance of the board of commissioners meeting. Um, and you know, and I think that we can, I, I really think that that's, that's some of the benefit. I think there's more as we get this done. And mm -hmm. I think it's a great stat, like great move in the right direction for Tarpon. And there's a lot more that I've already learned from being here that can be right. built around it. So I guess uh, Graham just found a uh, Google photo of the, yeah. what you were talking so, about. Can I, I, say, can I see can I see that? from over there, but 
Okay. Because yeah. I have major concerns about putting anything there. Well, the thing is, it's, you know, my first thought is that it's <laughs> still a bu busy pedestrian walkway that's also part of the working port. You know, you still have sponge oh, yeah, boats coming yeah, in. Yeah, I'll address that. So, yeah, so I when I looked at that in Athens, Athens had to, uh, was about three foot eight or so from the we're sidewalk, on, we're and it's Athens. an intersection. <laughs> so I thought that the, the concern about the trolley stop with that visual and the distraction might actually be worse than that because there's so much going. There's two crosswalks and an intersection. <clears throat> Down the way, there's a crosswalk, which it just is a little bit closer to the sponge diver, but there isn't that same thing. Plus, I can push it back about five, six feet less yeah. need for bollards, and the sidewalk is really wide, and by putting it that far back and not further, is all the room is still enabled there for the trucks to pass through and to lay out the sponges. So that's kind of how I looked at it. You know, it's like when you look at the street and it's bumped back for parking a little bit, it's kind of like, it's just, it's basically about 10 feet in from that, um, in that same lane versus mm -hmm. further back. Because I actually did see the sponges laid out in the tourist taking pictures, and I talked to one of the sponge boat operators right. and so yeah and I talked to Tina about that so right. that taking all in consideration that was my best recommendation okay uh, Graham okay. do you have any comments well so um, if you're standing outside the sponge exchange looking mm -hmm. across the street at the diver statue mm -hmm. um, to um, the, to the left is the walkway yeah the, right to this left of the bus sponge out of right is a little yeah, is a walkway, there's yeah. the left so um, you're talking about either between the diver and the light post to the left or the diver and the light post to the right, which one? Well, actually what it is is a diver yes. uh, sculpture. Then there's light posts, there's two sets. Yes. And one set on the, uh, what is the east side, in the middle of that is the sponge, uh, uh, sponger uh, bike rack. The small scale that there's a bike rack. Mm -hmm. To the west is where I'm talking about. So it's actually not between the diver and the well, post, the it's between rack. two right. posts. It's a, it's a little further off from that. Oh, so again, I see. So, it's not so crowded up against it. So yeah. you're to the east of the... Um, so if you, the east of the diver and, and closer to the bike racks. Well, and actually, no. What I'm saying is, if you look at the sponge diver, right? Yeah. And you look equidistant, there's a, there's a space, then there's a light post, and then there's a second light post. Between yeah. the two light posts on this side would be the sponge diver bike rack. Between the two light posts on the other side would be that sculpture. So you're talking about a symmetrical setup, essentially. Oh, I see. Putting yeah. it over here to match that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then unlike where the bike rack is, there's not even, any, there's some actually electrical and other grant access to water or whatever, something going on right near there. So it was yeah. smart to put that smaller scale thing there versus a bigger sculpture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's, you know, I think it really, mm -hmm. objectively. Okay. I Robert? I think uh, when I first came on, this project was already sort of in the books somehow, uh, not defined like it is, but uh, I was really excited about it uh, because of the, the history. I like history and, and the history mm -hmm. of Tarpon Springs, I think, is, is uh, really kind of fascinating. It's, it's much more complex than a lot of people think it is. And uh, I, when I thought about this project early on, I, my, my basic... Uh, response was it needs to be right there with the Greek sponge diver. And it needs to be there to uh, uh, somehow or another um, tell the story of, of Tarpon Springs. Or, or uh, not tell the story, but help tell the story. Exactly, yeah. And, and Steve's work is a, Stephen's work is a perfect thing because you've you got narrative in there. You've got a lot of narrative in there, a lot of association of stuff. Uh, and uh, um, I think, you know, basically, when I thought of this project, where you are seeing it now as, a, as an alternative space that would work, narrowed down, made a little bit taller maybe, mm -hmm. um, be a, 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 you know, a totem almost you mm -hmm. know, of, of, of this information, a, a uh, information kiosk type thing. I mean, it actually is almost like a yeah, kiosk. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how people yeah. would relate to it in a way. I mean, people don't even need to see it as art. They see it as information mm -hmm. in a lot of respects. But I think it's in the perfect place. I mean, it's the place I thought it was going to be in, and in my experience with doing these things. Uh, one, because it's in context with the image uh, of, uh, of what we think of, what tourists think of, of um, Tarpon Springs, a, a Greek sponge fishing village. And this is, uh, it's in context with it. And, and, and 
you know, this is saying also, <laughs> you know, there's this history, and it's right there. It, 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 if, it's, if it's somewhere else, it's not going to have the visual context that people are going to bring to it. And um, the other thing that, that I, I looked at very um, much in the relationship I have, the, the installation of it, the engineering going on and putting this in this place, it's already concrete. There's no infrastructure underneath it. I mean, yes, it does interfere a little bit with, with the, the working port, but then there's a lot of stuff. I mean, was this consideration given when they put the bike rack in? You know, so it's important that this mm -hmm. sculpture be visual and, and uh, be visual in a way that it's up front, not in the back. You know, I, I just really cringe at the thought of it being in the back of something. I think yeah. everybody was I mean, like I think, that. I think that sends the wrong message about what we're trying to do with uh, black heritage sculpture <laughs> is putting it in the back of something. Mm -hmm. So I think it needs to be up front and it's not going to be the greatest thing. I can, I can see it with a whole bunch of sponges piled around it, probably, like they do all the other things, you know, when they, when they unload their, their sponge stuff. So, I mean, I, I see it as, as basically a, a bore and bolt kind of in installation. I mean, you're on an already concrete pathway, you, you, you know, so you could make a plinth or it could be flush. I mean, it, it, you could be up higher. And you could build a, a block plinth or a pedestal and, and put it on, or it could be flush with the, with the, uh, mm -hmm. the sidewalk itself. But Because I think that's a perfect location. And when I first heard of this project, that's exactly where I saw it being. Mm -hmm. Steve? So, I'm going to have a lot of comments, obviously, because I'm the biggest stakeholder down there, <coughs> the one with the most the, you know, history down there. Um, I like what you're saying conceptually about the visibility of it. <coughs> Practically, um, because it's the working waterfront, because there's a lot of foot traffic, and mainly because we are now have put in motion, uh, the city has hired a consulting firm to create a vision plan for the sponge docks area. I have a hard time putting something on the main dock without that vision plan being created first. Um, that, yeah. And um, without actually going down there and physically sitting, standing at that spot, I would have a hard time approving anything on the main dock at all. I don't even like the bike racks down there, sorry. Um, I, I, I think it's too much uh, disruption of the working waterfront and the fo foot traffic. And I would just have to, before I would, I would be able to nod my head yes to anything, I would have to physically stand down there and, and feel the space because I have a lot of, you know, I mean, that's where I'm from, right? And, and I have a lot of uh, stakes down there as well. So um, I have concerns over, over anything being placed, not that particular sculpture, anything being placed, anything else being placed down there without the vision plan and also without like physically seeing what kind of disruption it would cause. Um, I, do, I mean, I do agree the visibility of it is important. I have not, uh, I don't know what the Athens Street site is. I have, I never... Um, saw that. I didn't I get the uh, uh, attachments, or maybe I didn't just didn't see them. But mm -hmm. I know what we were originally talking about in the or the second, not the first, because the right. first was you know, um, and I agree that was possibly you know too tucked away. Uh, so like I said, I would have to just physically be down there to see what that's all about. Um, I think that's been part of. The reservations in the back and forth, and not everybody mm -hmm. has been on the same page because they haven't been at, seen everything or been down there. And I, quite frankly, I hadn't been down there initially because at first we were saying, but we're just going to, that was the site, choose something in Marina. But anyway, this is kind of where the process has led. Um, and I will address the, the plan because um, <laughs> there's actually three things, and I'll be quick about this, sure. but um, uh, in terms of a larger vision, one of them is that plan, and Tina mentioned it to me, and I, I had coffee with her after the last meeting, mm -hmm. and we talked at length about it, and um, um, I agree with her. Matter of fact, I think the scale of the place is beautiful. It's got all this great culture down there, including this thing. I just was like, why are you not marketing, getting your coffee, and you have your fortune stake? And I mean, mm -hmm. this is like something amazing. <laughs> but anyway, um, um, 
she mentioned that plan. She mentioned that um, it hadn't been accepted and then it was now. So now they're working on that. Now that's also my background in planning and architecture and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I always have that other other side looking, looking at things. Um, how I look at this is that on one side, it's important enough to have there on a smaller footprint. So that's a kind of compromise because Tina mentioned the tables to me and I was like, oh, but I said, but there's got to be something. I mean, this is so ideal. Uh, the other thing is that she mentioned that plan that was going to the, the consulting mm -hmm. was maybe aimed at a relaunch. I, I said, Deer is right, right for a relaunch. If you can seed this place, help people improve the facades and encourage it and attract more business, mm -hmm. it's all win-win. And then you can literally do a relaunch. If you've got the hist other layer history in that, it's all the better. And then, so here comes the next pieces. <laughs> and this is looking way out, but I'm saying it only because you raised that. Mm -hmm. So that's the beginning step with the sculpture and then the Thorsus plan as part of a relaunch in my mind. The second one is, is that because this is two sculptures, 1.6 or 7 or almost two miles apart now, um, there was always a need to link. Mm -hmm. So we have that link. We have a grant already approved and a first thing in the black community went to a surveying process. When you get the sculpture in place, the two, and you write more grants and you say, look at what we're doing, we've got all these layers of incredible stuff going on in Tarpon. We get the Greek history, we've got the first, what, Pinellas County, first town Pinellas County, all the things you want to write, it adds in a narrative to just build on. So net, you could raise your, your funds to do black history markers. You can do it to a call for more art. You can do it in terms of bike path improvements. I mean, because there's all these overlaying great, this is Tarpon has incredible mm -hmm. potential. That's what I've seen since I've been here. One last piece is a quick, and when I met with the planner, and I was really impressed with her, um, that day I went and surveyed, did my work, but I also surveyed the city, and I saw a huge opportunity healing. Between the articles I read over historically from about 70 years, I saw a huge opportunity for healing, addressing planning. So that's the kind of way I look at it. Um, so I, I think it's like win, win, win. We just have to get through this. And um, um, again, just for a practical matter, when I looked at that, it was the only place where I felt like the trucks don't have to be impeded. They can go around the back. If, that, if, the, if there's no on-street parking for a festival or something, mm -hmm. they can go around that way. Um, unlike with Athens, it's tight. They kind of have to go around and almost turn around and probably do some UEs. It's like, what's the, what's the chance we're going to have more of an issue with that? Mm -hmm. So... Um, again, that was the best site I saw with the visibility and, and, fulfill, and kind of checking all the boxes. And I think it has the ultimate potential to feed into a, a plan like that. Mm -hmm. So anyway. But yeah, we should take a look. Yeah. No, I, I mean, like I said, I don't... I'll be around a later, later, too, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> to go down. Well, mm -hmm. this week is so, not going to happen. <laughs> so, I'm wondering if yeah, she looked at the Commissioner mm -hmm. Lunt's... But yeah, I would have to physically. Did you look at the site the that part. Commissioner Lunt had? Yeah, that was the middle of Athens Avenue. I did analysis of that and the that drawings. Was the that was the middle one. Yeah, I did a whole analysis of that with drawings and everything. So, Tony, do you have any comments or observations? I would actually like to go see where it is myself. Okay. Because I just also I think it'd also just be good just to get a quick catch up. To mm -hmm. see. Yeah. Um, the the one thing too I want to mm -hmm. you know bring up is you know in conversations mm -hmm. with Mark about this because mm -hmm. he's been instrumental in mm -hmm. you know giving us feedback. Yeah. Um, if the sculpture is placed mm -hmm. and over the course of time it doesn't seem to work out for whatever reasons, it can be moved. Mm -hmm. So you know keep that in mind. You know if if something you know mm -hmm. if Stephen has a you know, a uh, recommended, you know, uh, location for it, and it gets approved by the Board of Commissioners, and it's installed, and certain issues develop around it, it can be moved. The mayor actually intimated that at the last board meeting, so when he was trying to sort of cut through and right. just get it done, but I... Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I guess, you know, we're going to have to go back to the Board of Commissioners at mm -hmm. the next meeting, which mm -hmm. is the 25th. 25th. Right. Two weeks from today. Right. So, uh, poor Stephen, we're going to have to ask you for <laughs> another computerized projection of, of the sculpture. And um, Yeah, what I sent, there should be some images um, 
on those three sites. Oh. Athens, the one I, I, I really highly recommend, right. and then the initial one in between the trees, which... Did the rest of us get those? I would almost yeah. take over Athens. I like it being central, but like, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Diane, did those go out? I don't think they went out to everybody. Okay. No, they did not. Okay. So um, we'll all take a look at those and... Um, you know, if you wanted to, you know, rework something, you know, giving that location, mm -hmm. you know, like prioritize it perhaps. Oh yeah, there's a there, there's a there's a write up, and then there was a second uh, email with a whole bunch of uh, mm -hmm. six or six or seven Im images or something like that. that I've got to write a backup okay. memo for yeah, okay. the yeah. April twenty fifth, yeah. so I'll incorporate all of that right, into yeah. the memo. Right. Yeah. If you have anything in the meantime, we need to tweak. I can okay. I can feed you things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When I get the memo mm -hmm. completed, then I'll just email it to everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, and it would be nice if you all, whoever is available, to go to that meeting. Mm -hmm. I yeah. will be out of town, so it'll be Tuesday night at class. Joan yeah. and Stephen and the mm -hmm. city manager. Okay. So it really comes down to the the commissioners, and we'll, we'll just mm -hmm. have to see what they say. But uh, so in the attachments that you sent to um, Diana, mm -hmm. um, is there a you know? Sort of a visual of the uh, the new footprint. Yeah, there's in, a there's in a in relationship yeah. to that. There's a space. visual for all three places I described, and then there's also like a um, a site plan. I took it. I used my Google on my phone to uh -huh. do a site plan and mark it up, and and so so that you can you know look at the image, read the narrative. It has the initial marina site, has the Athens, and then has the last one I just described that I recommend. Mm -hmm. We're, so, we're saying Athens, like literally, like Athens, uh, like where Athens Avenue converges. It, it, it's a T intersection with uh, Go meets, Deccanese. Okay, but where would that be? Because uh, basically, if you're I coming down Athens of, Avenue towards the Sponge Docks, right, right across the street, it's like the end of the plaza. Yeah, right, right but the end of the little, plaza. So just FYI, there is a piece of that looks like the city dock that's actually oh, my property. That's right. Yeah, I. Okay. <laughs> so as long you know. I knew I knew that I knew that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's then. As a matter of fact, the 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 commissioner once sent us a map and that. Had it demarcated, yeah. so I okay. I kind of knew it just by eyeballing it because I saw the tents and things, and right. then the entrance on the side. Right, but, but that kind of spills over into where right. it looks like it's part of the city dock. So I didn't want to I didn't want to impede is, yeah. I didn't want to impede that business either. Plus, there's a manhole right out there between the two right. benches too. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I think where my property ends is where that little <laughs> sidewalk comes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So okay. okay. Um, All right, so uh, let's give this yeah. our best yeah. efforts. I just and like we'll, to go walk mm -hmm. the space before sure. I. Mm -hmm. Say right. yes to anything. All right. <laughs> and also, when we when we decide on the photo opportunity date, um, you maybe it might time. be a good time to go there as well mm -hmm. and see that actual site. That's so a great that's idea. Good idea. Yeah. That's a great yeah. idea, Diane. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, yet again, we have we'll get this done. And, uh, <laughs> what's the progress on the Union Academy site? Um, you know, I'm 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 working on these simultaneously, and uh, my intent is actually, especially with the resin, I, I'm trying to order that together. So mm -hmm. it's helpful to have. Um, you know, um, I can still work on the graphics. It's just the final right. size and all that stuff like that. It's best to order in uh, order together if I can. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, um, I had a meeting in the mayor's office with um, Georgia Lucas, who is Annie Dabbs's daughter. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I raised the possibility of trying to get that treasure trove of images and papers that Annie has digitized. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pursue that, and uh, maybe we could get you know, some kids from SPC or Tarpon High, if they have a, you know, community service project they had to do, that would be a... Yeah, she had some good information, which uh, some of it's actually in that piece. There's uh, there's some, you know, the the stories evolve narrative. I have her, I have her as a child in among a class picture, and I have her as well at the first reunion of that school, mm -hmm. 50, 50 years, at 50 years, uh, I guess, since right. then. So that's a really uh, a neat thing, and, you know... Mm -hmm. So it'll be a little, and I have a quote from her too, actually. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So uh, moving on here, the Riverside Field mural project, Diane, I guess we've got nothing again? No. We haven't. Um, we've put it out. Uh, the Pinnell sent it to uh, the Florida Association of Public Art. You know, it's called Artists on There, St. Pete Art Alliance. 
put it on, in, it's on their website as a call to artists, so we put it out on social media, and uh, I've gotten nothing back. I did, I did send it to one mural artist that uh, I saw was posting some something, and I sent it her in a message, so I would expect that she would hopefully soon submit something. I don't really know her. Or at I least just, respond. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know Commissioner Coolias had, uh, had talked about, you know, that he has a personal interest in that site as well, and, you know, so he mm -hmm. kind of weighed in a little bit on it as well. So, I, I mean, I'm not really sure what to do at this point. Um, you know, it's like we've, this is like the third time we're putting it out. So maybe, maybe it wasn't meant it to be. Well, it might be that the money's not very much, too. Well, a while ago, um, when it, it, it came up before the Board of Commissioners to do the match for the CRA grants, mm -hmm. I ask some of the more prominent mural artists in Tarpon Springs what they charge, and that's well within their price range. Okay. Well within. So, I mean, they were talking about 500, you know, and uh, so this is, this. it would be $2,000 to do How the two How many years walls. ago was that? Two. Okay. I mean, if we had inflation, but that would be a big inflation. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, but the, the so the thing is that they originally were proposing a twenty five hundred dollar match, and they brought it down to fifteen hundred, because the you know they they didn't think that most any murals, you know, done in this area would, you know, Surprise. be more than three thousand so. dollars. I can put my feelers out because um, on Facebook, I think it's the Top and Springs community Facebook page, mm -hmm. I could have sworn I saw somebody advertise something about doing murals. Yes, oh, that's yeah. the person, and I reached mm -hmm. out to her, and oh, I sent it to her. Oh, is that the person that you reached out to? Yeah, and I sent okay. it to her, and she was excited about it and everything, and, and you just haven't apparently heard she has not uh, <laughs> put anything in. <laughs> yeah, I did. That's the person I reached out to. Well, you know, the, the thing that I find amazing, you know, I belong to two different organizations that do fundraiser for uh, mm -hmm. academic scholarships. And they literally have to go out and beat the bushes to get kids to fill out this simple application for a scholarship. Oh, I know. Right? <laughs> it's crazy. It's, uh, you know, like, you know, when my son was applying so, to colleges, I would, you know, I'd go out and find every little weird scholarship that he might qualify for. Oh, I literally but, have our department chair, the fine arts, say, SBC, calling me saying, do you have any students that I can put their names down for this money because we can't. We like there's nobody right. applying for this money. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> um, maybe we should advertise it on TikTok. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's probably a good Standing idea. Standing in front of it with a <laughs> camera, you know. You're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Graham, you could hold a sign. And You're not wrong. <laughs> Dance. Mm -hmm. I was but. talking to my granddaughter. You know, it's a, she said says things like, "Isn't it on TikTok?" Oh, I didn't see it. That's that's yeah. a good idea. I don't have a TikTok account. If I don't either. Wants to post it, <laughs> right? Know, feel free. You have a TikTok account? I don't. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But uh, yeah. Does anyone want to open one for the good of the gorder? <laughs> I'm not sure it'll make a difference. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, should I ask Kevin Grass if he wants to, you know, his painting class to ask him? Sure. Some, I mean. Yeah. Sure. Can't hurt. Okay, because mm -hmm. they've been doing murals on campus uh, in Clearwater, so. Mm. I call it sure. my chicken soup philosophy. Can't hurt, might help, right? Okay. I don't know if, if one of the deterrents is the fact that they have to have a specific theme, that maybe they're just not really interested in doing that kind of a theme, like a sports theme. I don't know. You know, I just. Well, Commissioner Coolius was not interested in a sports theme. As he said in his email, he was more interested in family fun theme, which you know would open it up to alternate interpretations. Mm -hmm. If we, if we said okay, fine, we go along with that, mm -hmm. and and I have no problem mm -hmm. with family fun themes. Mm -hmm. They sound like family fun. <laughs> well, we could put it out, give it the you know, the one more try. Right. Okay. Four times a charm. Right. Okay, Pete the Pelican. Well, let's decide what we're going to do first. If you don't, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, you want to try to vote on on putting it out again with a 
a different theme or an and or you know like maybe it can be you know right i, okay. I wouldn't exclude sports because i don't think he excluded sports he just didn't no. like the particular design mm -hmm. um so yeah maybe you just open making it a little bit wider yeah okay mm -hmm. okay so uh do i have a motion to um re-release the quilt artists with uh the proviso that the uh, subject matter be uh, widened? Yes. Yeah. I'll, okay. Um, I'll make that motion. Okay, Graham? I'll second it. Okay, thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passes unanimously. Okay, thanks, Diane. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have Pete the Pelican photo, and I think, Diane, didn't you and I talk about also doing Sylvester the cat? As yeah, well, I think day. they're close by. So. Okay. Yeah. So I think what we'll do is we'll go down the line here and people can indicate, you know, uh, when they're available or not. Okay. Um, I guess I'll start April 19th is not good. Uh, the 20th for me is okay after 2 o'clock. Ditto. Okay. Uh, Friday the 21st, okay. 24th, okay. Wednesday the 26th, not okay. Viva? Of those that you just gave, Friday the 21st is the only day that I can do. Okay. Graham? Um, I can do the 21st. Okay. Robert? I'm ambivalent. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can do it any time. Okay, so you're okay? I think, I think I could do it any time. Okay, Sonia? Yeah, I'm available Okay, anytime. it looks like the 21st it is. Okay. Uh, Dawn is not available on that date, but I don't know about Nick, so I'll okay. just let him know. So Friday the 21st. That's what um, they what get for not showing up. What time, <laughs> there you go. What time of the day do you want to plan it for? At the uh, mayor's convenience? Yeah, the mayor's convenience. Well, he said he's available all day, so I think I think if you all say like maybe do you want to do it in the I'm looking at the sun in the morning, like you know the way it hits it, or if it's better to do it like at one in the or two in the afternoon. Well, it starts to get beastly hot down there, or one. I'm I'm leaning toward the morning. Morning's better for morning? me because once okay. my Bye. Do you want to say come home what ten o'clock? <laughs> yeah, ten o'clock is yeah. perfect. Ten a.m. Okay. okay. I'll confirm okay. that with him, and I'll send an email out to everybody. Great, thanks, Perfect. Dan. Okay, and as uh, we just discussed, Sylvester the cat was installed, so uh, that's done. Uh, any comments about Sylvester? I like him. Mm-hmm. It's a nice little combination, again, of history and art. <laughs> okay, uh, Megan, you're up. Developer contributions. Okay, I'm putting together um, an Excel sheet of like a little bit more um, detailed financials. Um, I'm sorry, it's on the printer in my office. You will be beaten. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to update. So right now the fund balance is at one hundred eighty-one thousand and ninety-seven dollars. Okay. There are no current project updates. Mm -hmm. I uh, wanted to update you all on a lot of the projects that Joan had asked about, and this is all going to be in the um, details of what I, mm -hmm. so it'll have project income as well as like our payments um, for things that we've put through. Mm -hmm. um, Pat is checking on Manatee Village. Again, I hadn't had a response on that one. Mm -hmm. Sponge City Brewing is not applicable. It is under $1 million. Um, the Eagle Ridge Housing Authority is affordable housing, so it does not qualify for a contribution. Um, all of these have contributions. Um, starting in January, February of 2022, Eagle Creek Subdivision is $13,365. Uh, March of 2022 is Big Dan's Car Wash. $15,874.13. Also March 2022, Furman's Volvo, $24,474.73. And then both in June of 2022 is the North Lake Estate Subdivision at $13,500. And the Take 5 Car Wash at $10,500. And then finally in 2022 was Flagship Bank, 
$7,681.36. Okay. And again, she's checking on Man Manatee Village at this moment. And then so we're in 2023 and I don't have anything for 2023. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions or comments about our projects, income? Has anybody noticed any, you know, well, the, big projects that are being <clears throat> snuck in under the radar. Well, not that are being <laughs> snuck in under the radar, but um, I noticed that they have um, broken ground on one of the projects. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's the Furman or one of the car washes on 19. One is the, one yes. Is, yes. One yeah. of the yeah. 8 million car washes on 19. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to have a clean car? I yeah. know. But not one of them do full service. I know. It's terrible. Anyway. Terrible. What about the... Um, they think they're washing something else. Uh, is the... <laughs> the rebuild of the fire department, um, the firehouse uh, uh, city project, it's is it something that, that would qualify uh, for this? Oh, and the city clerk's office. Yeah, I know. I know uh, Wanamaker and um, and and Hoffman are together on design redesigning that thing. Is mm -hmm. that? Yeah, I'll have to find out with My, the city. I, I think it does qualify. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I know that they're going to, uh, you know, the clerk's office is being assessed, so mm -hmm. I would assume the fire department is too. Probably. Okay. Yeah, and that would be, be a down good the road. place for a public art project. There Certainly you go. Would, you yeah. Know, both of them. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. right. uh, you know. Yeah. Excellent, Robert. They're public buildings. Mm -hmm. They're public buildings. Public mm -hmm. art, public buildings. Right. Seems to go together. I think, I think uh, you know, one thing in, in, in this dealing with, with uh, the Black Heritage Project is that we, we seem to have a concept. We had a concept. We had, had, had all this work around it. We didn't have a place for it. Yes, we did. Well, mm -hmm. not really. Well, we had the Union Academy neighborhood actually was one that I thought was yeah, going to be the most problematic, and it's yeah, not. No, well, that that's fine. But the uh, the issues we're having around um, the uh, the docks, let's say, mm -hmm. for instance. I mean, it's it's helpful in these kind of situations when the artist has a known entity, so they can go in there and deal with the infrastructure that's right. in it. They can deal with the social. Stuff. They can they can do the what's called civil engineering around the project as opposed mm. to the physical engineering around right. it, and, and uh, uh, so you know I, you know and it puts a, the artist quite often if they have to keep changing, keep mm -hmm. having to, to to redesign right. to to fit into a place. Oh, that's too big. No, it's too small. No, we're going to put something there. Mm -hmm. You know, it it kind of is is. Uh, I think it's a learning point for us. I mean, this is a big project, right? Yeah. And uh, there, hopefully, there's more big projects that come along in a way. And we need not just not just the physical space, but the the, the historical, the emotional right. space, the social space needs to be worked out. Mm -hmm. I, I I think it's great up there on on um, Martin Luther King, and and uh, mm -hmm. I think. I think that's good, and I, you know, it's it's really important for it to be two places so you can connect the two. Right. I feel like the city is kind of disconnected anyway mm -hmm. between the docks and the and the other part of right. Of Tarpon Ave, yeah. And uh, there are ways in which um, it could be brought together more. I mean, there's. I noticed there's a sign here on on Tarpon Avenue. It says um, Sponge Docks that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you go down, uh, I think it's on Safford. Right. You go down Safford, there's no more signs. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? You turn left, you turn right. And you, never know you turn left. You mm -hmm. can't see it from there. Right. Right. So there's no sign. Uh, and that's just one thing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how do, do we, uh, you know, it's, it's the thing. I mean, I, you know, I brought it up uh, in a couple of meetings ago, I guess. I, I mean, are we proactive or are we reactive? In this, and how mm -hmm. much, how much proactive can we be in this thing? And the, it's it's been a problem. I mean, Lucy Ann got really frustrated with oh, with what she was trying to deal with in the city on either end of Safford Avenue, and th that's that's just totally perfect for what those two sites right. were. But they, you know, th something gets thrown in. We get to do you know this mm -hmm. work. She did a lot of work on that. And then told, well, we're we going to plant trees, or we're we going to put a pickleball court there, or we're we going to, and then they don't do it. 
Right. Right. And, and then well, that th those that site at, by the uh, across from the dog park is yeah. back in play. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to put a pickleball court right. there anymore. Yeah, but what are they going to put there next time? Tomorrow? Well, the thing know. is that... Depends what we yeah. offer. I mean, it'd be a perfect place for a pickleball court. Exactly. <laughs> it'd be quiet over there. there. Uh, <laughs> no, I spoke to Lucy Ann, and uh, we actually had lunch with um, uh, Shelley Weintraub, whose husband, Lee Weintraub, Weintraub is a uh, very well-known landscape architect which we had gotten on board when this thing first came around. So it's not dead. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of, you know, sort of waiting in the wings to see if we can, you know, kickstart it again. Mm -hmm. But um, Sonia, the, the, the concept was to do a um, landscape mm -hmm. piece, like a respite area yeah. along the bike trail. And, you know, we looked at two locations and one of the problems is, and Robert alluded to it perfectly, is that something could be perfect artist artistically and historically, but not politically. You yes. know, a lot of the bike trail is owned by the county, so it's kind of off limits. So, you know, we've run into problems using private property. So everything is going to be on city property, and that's limited. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of constraints. So we're trying to, you know, get the biggest bang for our buck in terms of the locations and our budget and you know really getting you know worthwhile projects yeah so it's as i said it's not dead yet but you know it's going to be revisited you know well, because i only recently found out as robert indicated there aren't going to be pickleball <laughs> courts there yeah i also read about that that they i don't know somebody said it was just a waste of money Apparently, they're quite happy with them taping on the tennis courts. But what, what I think I what, what, what Robert said was really key is that when you create, when you come up with a project, you need to get it vetted through the departments for the as for as far as the location goes first before going through all, you know, picking an artist and everything like that. It's like this is the location or whatever, but make that an integral part of the step. On the front end, you know, just so we don't run into this, you know, issue again. Well, you know, part of, of the thing. problem is that, you know, the, you know, the concepts for the use of that kept changing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we did, we, we thought we would have availability for that landscape project, and then it evaporated. You know, for pickleball courts. Now the pickleball courts are gone. Yes, so it's kind yeah. of a moving target. You know, mm -hmm. it's. Well, another opportunity maybe if the city does acquire Cokehurst Park. Um, you know, behind right. the sponge docks, there could be opportunity there to mm -hmm. create something. Um, and remember, right. one of the considerations, too, whatever project you pick, you've also, also got to consider maintenance of it. You know, with our bronze statues, oh, sure. that's easy. But, you know, anything that's got to do with landscaping and everything, that's, you know, that's got to be vetted through the mm -hmm. city, you know, mm -hmm. right. people, too. So, and access for drainage that we don't even realize, you know, sometimes. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a good idea you to do it on the front end and everything. Right. All of which sounds like excellent reasons to have a workshop to discuss all of these things so that everybody can get on board with what the constraints are as well as the... Right. The goals. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this is the first time I've heard about the vision plan for the docks, but I think we mm -hmm. should... This committee should be it's included. It's not just for the docks, it's for the Greek town area. Right. I think we, mm -hmm. the public art committee should be included. Well, whoever wants to be can be included. They're, they're right. going to have meetings and you know, right. get input from... Okay. Who's, who's the head of this, Tina? Um, no, actually, um, so Stantec is the uh, consultant that's coming in, but um, it's going through... Uh, planning and uh, zoning. Planning and zoning? Uh, yeah, right. the zoning. Uh, planning and zoning? Yeah. Or it is a, a city-led mm -hmm. thing. Okay. Yes. I'll have to send an email to Mark. And so, yeah. so is this is this survey thing, is this a public works project, or is it, is it sort of like the the, uh, the the sign gateway that we had to approve or, or give some recommendations to? No, this is, it's just, it's, this initial phase is just a vision plan, so they are going to, you know, there's going to be no actual work done with the first phase of this, with the, with this plan that's being created. Um, it's going to be so that we're not 
piecemealing things together down there and just mm -hmm. plopping stuff here and there so that mm -hmm. there's a greater plan for placemaking for you know the facades to bring it back to which you know so, heritage mm -hmm. so so mm -hmm. i guess to continue what, what joan sort of just mm -hmm. mentioned is how come we're not part of it how come we're not you know the the public art committee has not been asked to well it hasn't started yet well e even so mm -hmm. i mean what right yeah. well the Greek Town Heritage and Preservation Association is the one who asked for this um, to happen and put, asked for the budget line. Okay, so um, we have been involved in you know getting this uh, right, and, and so then the process went through. The company was picked, and now the meetings will begin for input. Okay, right. um, but you know it is about the you know the Greek Town stakeholders and property owners and residents that are down there, you know, uh, to have a voice uh, in what's going to happen down there. Mm -hmm. um, because there has to be a balance between the heritage and progress, right? Right. But, um, and, and so because in the past everything has kind of been, you know, well, let's do this and let's put some planters here, let's put some palm trees here, let's put a gateway here, let's do mm -hmm. this. There's no greater plan, you know, to, so that we can follow something and know what right. where we're going, right? Yes. Right, but our mission statement puts mm -hmm. us basically in charge of the appearance of the city, so we should be, you know, an integral part of this well, planning it's, it's process. Again, it's again, I think, the, an issue with Tartan Springs is somehow, and I don't, I'm just saying this is a big, broad thing, is that we seem not to be invited to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We don't get mentioned, we don't get mm -hmm. listed, uh, and yet here we are, you know, as you said, I mean, that this is one of our uh, jobs here is to think in terms mm -hmm. of the whole thing and to do a, to do a, a vision plan without the, the public art committee being part of it from the get-go. I, I, you know, it's, it's like there, there's a lot of times where you get brought in at the end when there's nothing left, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing left. What about planning for space? I mean, I... Uh, I remember when they were building the McCormick Center in Chicago. My my art dealer was actually in Chicago was actually very involved in this. Convince them, convince these people in the city, the city hall, everybody, to build spaces based on the art that was going to go in it. <laughs> in other words, the artists were consulted before the building was designed. Right. Yeah. Right. That is the that's the thing, and that's what made that such a, an award winning place. So, mm -hmm. so everybody was aware right there that the art was going to go there. We're going to build a special room mm -hmm. that does something mm -hmm. that this artist has has suggested. We build it precisely this way. Right. And I, and I think that, you know, when we had when we went through all this stuff uh, months ago. There was all this, the city's going to do this, going to do that. We got this, and no mention of the arts. Mm -hmm. We had to say, what about the arts? And, oh, well, yes, yes. It always, it, right. No, it's, it should be, I'm sorry, but it should be mm -hmm. you know, no, at I the agree. forefront of things. In a way. I agree. Like, yeah. you know, and yeah. are we proactive or reactive? And it seems well, like, it like the city thinks yeah. we're reactive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, here's a space over here, or, you know, mm -hmm. and... and uh, if, if we want to use a space that's seemingly not being used, oh, well, we're thinking about something for that. But we don't know they're thinking mm -hmm. about something for that. There's no pipeline between us. And uh, I think, I, you know, I think, you know, Tarpon likes to think of itself as a cultural town. Mm -hmm. And it should be. I mean, the, the culture that goes on down at the docks, it goes on, on uh, out at the athletic fields should be, the same level of importance to, to mm -hmm. the, the committee. Right. So, no, agree. Yeah. So, and I right. mean, you know, very often yeah, we've right. been told mm -hmm. what we can't do in different locations around the city. So, uh, you know, it doesn't give us any insight into what we can do going forward. So it's hard for us to plan or solicit artists or come up with concepts, you know, for different, you know, installations. So... So anyway, I'll have to uh, maybe send an email to Mark about, you know, including the public art committee in uh, the vision planning. So, Graham? Yes, sorry to harp on the uh, workshop thing and, okay. the, and, the, and the long-term plan, but 
you know, in common with other workshops that we've had, mm -hmm. um, it, it does give us the opportunity to ask um, city employees and others that are representative, like, for instance, um, the, uh, the, the Greek heritage um, folks, the mm -hmm. historical society, all those other people, that we can, if we're holding a series of workshops, invite them to come and talk to us and share with us what they want to do so right. that we can share with them what they what, what we want to do mm -hmm. and hopefully mm -hmm. begin a dialogue instead of this feeling that, that, that Robert has and that I have is that we're stuck in some silo that keeps getting ignored. Right. No, I, I agree with you. I feel the same way. But uh, anyway, all right, so... Um, Eva, you have to leave, right? Um, as soon as possible, but okay. I don't want to miss this sponge trail that I don't know what it is because it okay. sounds like it's uh, of interest to me. Well, okay. <laughs> well um, a, a friend of mine who was um, Carrie Root from uh, the Rotary um, watched the Public Art Committee uh, meeting and the, Board of uh, and the Board of Commissioners meeting, and um, this was when, you know, follow the bouncing artwork, um, the uh, Black Heritage Project was going to be down at the end of the marina. And what she uh, suggested, and I'm going to throw it out for you, is to create a walking path. In other words, you know, using a sponge and some paint, you know, just kind of like follow the, the sponge prints that would guide people through all the artwork, you know, in different parts of the city. You know, um, I spoke to Mark about it before the meeting, and um, it can be done very cheaply. All you need is a sponge and a gallon of outdoor paint, would not obstruct or interfere with anything, and can be easily altered and or removed if needed. So, um, Graham, you have any thoughts about this? I mean, it's done in other places. I mean, I think it's a great idea. I think. Um, that uh, embedded in the sponge prints could be um, uh, those marks, either um, the, the stacked barcode type things or, or the, um, um, the other marks like they use down at uh, uh, the Dali and other mm -hmm. places. You know, the, I forget the, the, the technical term for them. Um, but um, we could... Uh, embed those into the prints and have um, the ability for people with phones to listen to what they're right. looking at or listen to what's next, you know, which give them directions, um, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I think it could be expanded um, to do that. But then again, if we just want to keep it to the cost of a bucket of paint and a sponge and somebody walking through doing it, then that's obviously a little right. bit Right, well, more. yeah, there, there was mention of QR codes. Biba, I know you have to leave, so I'm going to give you mm -hmm. the... Yeah, I, I just think I'd have to see a visual of what that would look like. Right. Because it, it sounds great, but it could be horrible, too. Right. You know, <laughs> it could well, be both. you know, um, they exist in a lot of other places. I know when I was in uh, Buenos Aires... Sponge trail, specifically? No, that's what but I'm saying. little like footprints. I, right, no, I know, but yeah. I think it would be nice to get a sample of what that may look like. Right. Um, there is a walking tour with uh, through the, the docks area, at least, right. through Tarpon, mm -hmm. um, that I think is underutilized. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the QR codes have disappeared from, you know, <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? <okay. laughs> right. Um, I mean, they're just not, never were put anywhere permanently. They were, you know, handed out in pamphlets for each of these sites to give out. But that, mm -hmm. you know how that disappears. So I think we could do a much better job of, right. you right. know, having some permanent fixtures where people could follow along a trail. I would just personally, because people's ideas sometimes sound good but look horrendous, right. I would love to see a actual, like, make us a sample of what that might look like. Okay, well, um, just just envision taking a sponge. I'm and not going to envision it, anything. Okay, I want to okay. see it. <laughs> because what I might do with the sponge and what you might do with the sponge, what Robert might do with the sponge, and what that person might do with the just sponge like, might okay. look entirely differently. So I don't, I'm, very, I'm very adamant about not seeing Theorizing what I'm gonna, mm -hmm. you know, I, I got to see a sample. Where is the trail going? What? It, how does? How would? What's the path? It would. It would. Um, I. I kind of figured it would start at the visitors information center. On the docks. On the docks, and wend its way down to like the naiads. Right. It would end at the naiads. Yeah. And so again, because I. Know. 
I heard um, last week, I heard somebody say they're planning doing something similar, but for downtown Tarpon. So don't you think it'll be a good idea to incorporate the docks as well? So when somebody like me is, or I mean, I've got a, we've got visitors here this weekend, wouldn't it be nice if they had a pamphlet or see, I mean, right. yeah. everybody works on their cell phones, and we just incorporate it. So right, well, that, because we're they not would that have far to be, apart. Right, they would have to be supplemented by, you know, QR codes or some kind of... Right, and maybe you know, we can find, you know, look at that Florida Stories project that was done mm -hmm. at, and see, you know, how to incorporate something like that. But again, you know, I'm, I, I just, I think, you know, that larger plan uh, before we start adding more piecemealed stuff mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. personally I would uh, prefer before the docks gets anything yeah. mm -hmm. um, that that we have uh, a plan because right. there are things down there that I wish weren't there that mm -hmm. were added because you know I'm an insider right so I look at things differently so mm -hmm. I think it's good to have this balance in here because you know it's not everything down there I think works for mm -hmm. the space um, and so I just, I would like to see that larger plan created before we start adding anything else down there personally. Mm -hmm. Okay. But on that note, I have to run. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, but also the one in downtown, the one that they're planning for downtown top. And I think it's also just in the very beginning stages. So mm -hmm. mm -hmm. who's doing it? Do I have know? a blessed holy. Uh, thank I can you find very out much. Yeah, you're and welcome. I'll see you all next time. Yes. Yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> thank you. Robert, do you have any? Uh... I'm in favor of any visual way of connecting Tartan Springs interest points mm -hmm. from one place mm -hmm. or another. I'm in, I'm in favor of looking at all those possibilities. Right. Um, and um, um, I, I think it's, it's greatly missing. I, I, I constantly see families standing on the corner of uh, Orange and uh, North Pine Ellis Mm. Trying to figure out which way to go. Right. <laughs> yep. Exactly. And they have no idea where anything is. They're walking, mm -hmm. right? And they, they park their car somewhere. I don't know where. Mm -hmm. And somehow or another, they think, you know, and, and why people don't look at their GPS, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it tells you exactly where to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got, to, we got to somewhere in the green swamp this weekend <laughs> by using our GPS, you know, <laughs> and... Uh, so, so it, but anyway, you know, I, any kind of visual thing is, is, uh, right, right. is, mm -hmm. is, is something I'm look forward to. That's, that's our job, our business is mm -hmm. to know that. And these people that say they're going to do that without telling us, I Again, mean, we're, and we should have the power to say, no, you cannot do that yes. mm -hmm. until you pass it by us. Yeah. I mean, so, so, uh, you know, it, I think a conversation with the mayor that. and city manager is in. Yeah, I've yeah, never I mean, heard about yeah, that. The, I, I think that, that there, are, there, there seems to be this, in, the, this sort of environment of people thinking, well, we can just do this art thing here and do that thing that, and, and think that it's art or with, without consulting with this committee, which right. is, you know, we are. We right, are, and they're basically like stepping our on our, you spirits. know, mm -hmm. the, the toes of our mission statement. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, 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 and you know, it's it's just this. It just keeps coming back to the same thing. We we are forgotten about mm -hmm. until until the last minute. Oh, we got this extra parcel. Can you do something here? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we we have to then. We're not in the job of really coming up with projects as much as we are are supposed to be able to look at possibilities. Right. Submissions. Yeah. And then let the artists, in many types, tell us what would be appropriate there, right. instead mm -hmm. of us telling them what would be appropriate. Like, like the mural project. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody wants to paint. I mean, there's that wonderful little mural up on uh, uh, on Belcher that, that that's the fishes. Oh, I love yes. that. Yeah. The fishes that are transparent, and you can see through them. And the kids did all the little things on the bottom. I mean, put that on the on the athletic thing. I mean, I, you know, those are. Yeah. You know, th that was very creative. That was a very creative mm -hmm. mural, very simple, and I think mm -hmm. involved a lot of the kids mm -hmm. from the elementary school. There. Right. See, so I've was, always been in, char in, in favor of involving kids, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know. Yeah. But, uh, again, we have to get them to participate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last item here, and this is really something I'm charged with. 
Um, we have to provide an annual report to the Board of Commissioners every year. And I thought it was going to be in April, which is upon us, the cruelest month. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> But uh, Diane said that it's now going to be in June, and <clears throat> it basically involves, uh, you know, uh, a budget, a forecast, you know, an accounting for what we brought in and what we paid out, what we anticipate spending, and uh, an overview of what we've accomplished for this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've already started working on that, so it will be finished as soon as I have a, an end date and obviously everybody from the public art committee is invited to attend and heckle and, as they see fit. I think it's good timing though that it's in June because that gives you time to have a workshop and come out of the workshop with some good plans that might be incorporated. Right because we do have to pro make projections of what we'd like to, to do in the in the mm -hmm. coming year so Especially now we have the opportunity with the change in our um, uh, our bylaws, whatever no, it is, ordinance. The, ordinance. Thank you, um, that allows us to um, inveigle the city for additional funds for mm -hmm. specific projects. Right. I have put in the um, we're in budget season now, and I have put in fifty grand for. Uh, the Public Art Committee as part of the budget. Thank you. You go, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are there any staff comments? Diane? Um, I just wanted to give you all a, um, an update of what's going on at the Heritage Museum. Um, it's like all kinds of worker bees are in and out on a daily basis now. Um, We've got a lot of construction done. Now the lighting people are in there and it's being painted, uh, all the walls throughout the entire, um, you know, uh, Heritage Museum, everything's being repainted. And then the last thing we get was brand new carpeting throughout. So it's really gonna, it's just so refreshing to see the facelift that it's getting because mm -hmm. it's it was definitely very dated and very needed. And it's just such a, popular place we get you know because it's our the Tarpon Arts um, tickets main ticket sales office we get a lot of traffic from there and then they're like they come in and they look and they go oh a museum too you know so we get the mu people that are coming purposely for the museum and then we get the people coming for tickets that then you know want to you know go through it so we get a lot of traffic and our numbers have been really high for the Safford House as well as the Heritage Museum um, this year, I think everybody's out now with COVID is no longer a scare and we're just seeing such a, a large percentage of visitors. So I'm just really glad that we're getting, you know, a, a really nice facelift. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you all about, um, I have some concerns, is the eliminated art boxes. As you know, they have not been lit at night. And what I'm hearing from Public Works is, you know, they've been up for several years now. And what's happening is that the batteries are burning out and the wiring is failing. So they're going to have to go into every single one of those 20 illuminated art boxes mm -hmm. and determine is it the battery, is it the wiring. And they said that they weren't, they, they did not really like the wiring that they used because apparently, it, I guess, the corrosion of the seawater right. and, you know, everything, our, our weather is really taking its toll on it. Mm -hmm. So they're feeling like they're going to have to replace it with some heavier duty, you know, um, mm -hmm. electrical, you know, uh, attachments. So okay. it's going to be a process because what's happening is, you know, as you know, our public works are just spread all over the city for mm -hmm. different tasks. So they're, they haven't forgotten about it, but they just want you to know that there is going to be a cost associated okay. with them. And I said, you know, that they're very important, you know, to us. And so, you mm -hmm. know, just continue to give us updates on it. And um, so they are working on it. They haven't forgotten about it, but that was the feedback that I got. That okay, great. Thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. yeah, Appreciate thank it. You. So. Okay. Megan, do you have any... Tarpon Arts' next performances is 12 Incompetent Jurors at our community theater, mm. um, April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, and April 28th, 29th, and 30th 
It will sell out, so get your tickets now. <laughs> I think I was on that jury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, our next regular meeting is Wednesday, May 10th, 2023 at 2 p.m. in this no. location. Oh, Graham? Do we have committee comments this week, or are we not doing those? Oh, no. Go right ahead. Right ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the... Uh, um, uh, the art boxes and the failing batteries and so on, because that was going to be one of my um, issues for this 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 meeting. Um, I noticed that more of them are out, and it just seems to be getting a, a, a problem that's getting worse. And I'm glad that the uh, uh, that the public works department is thinking of um, or talking at least about um, doing some sort of replacement mm -hmm. electronics in there to make it all work properly. Um, do we have a um, an actual plan for doing a workshop? Yes or no? Diane, we, just, we have to get a, a date. But right. Do okay. you have you all need to decide on what the agenda is going to be and what you're going to? Well, the agenda is the long term plan for the yeah for the city for long term for, for, as the, for PAC and the city. Maybe it's a pre workshop workshop. Mm -hmm. But is it like a five year plan? What? When you say well, I think we, we were supposed to re review the, the, the master plan because that was mm -hmm. done two years ago and see whether it merits updating or not, mm -hmm. see whether it can stand as it is or, you know, need to be updated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think what we need is a, is a dialogue with, you know, the city and, you know, like this, you know, vision, vision plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as Sonia said, too, there seems to be something for, you know, Tarpon Ave, too. So, yeah, I, I, I haven't heard anything about those. Right. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So there there's there really needs to be more communication, you know, that includes us. Right. Which is if we have a workshop, we can get people plugged in. Right. If, if so we maybe, don't, we can't. Right. So maybe invite, you know, somebody from Greek Town Heritage, maybe somebody from the chamber, um, maybe somebody from, you know, Karen from Economic Development, you know, see if we can get a hold of Mark. I know his time is, uh, you know, very limited. Yeah, talk to him about what departments um, right. he would have, he would be okay with attending. We'll have to yeah. get a, a date first. Um, I'll have to find out when this room is available, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of committees use it, you know, kind of yeah. thing, so. Well, whatever date and time it is, I will make myself mm -hmm. available. Likewise. Okay. I'll try. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be at the next meeting. I'm having surgery the day before. Okay. So. Um, yeah, don't okay. come. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my final thing is that um, I know we approved uh, Elizabeth's video. Um, do we have any update on the actual deployment of that? Uh, we need a television. Mm -hmm. um, uh, actually, Elizabeth is over at the Cultural Center as we speak. Um, we're talking about doing a, an exhibit of her art coming up um, at the museum. We haven't finalized anything yet, but um, uh, once we get the we've got to work out what days it'll be open and things like that right now. You know, it's mm -hmm. pretty uh, pretty tough to, um, you know, with my employees, I don't have a whole lot of them and we have shows that we have to staff too. So, um, yeah. we're all working that out, but I'm working with Elizabeth now, you know, on that. I'm just wondering if the, um, um, you say we need a television, um, presumably you've already taken a look around your facilities to see if there's anything that is underutilized that could be moved there. Um, but, Actually, you know, perhaps no. the <laughs> IT department or another department within the city um, has something that could be, that's currently underutilized that could be moved there. Yeah, we use a television, um, we use the television in the Greek history wing for, you know, those um, those videos, so I can't take that one. Right. Um, I, might, I might have something for you. I have a TV, it works perfectly well, except uh, the connection to the uh, internet is wonky. But you wouldn't need that to 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 show. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I'll have to measure the space. It's a, it's a 55-inch Samsung. Yeah, let me just make sure. i got to remember, because the, the walls there are smaller than I thought they were, mm -hmm. you know, kind mm -hmm. of thing. So let me measure it, and um, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Because, I mean, the TVs have become cheap enough. I mean, yeah. yeah. There's a, there was an Amazon Fire TV, 55-inch, for like $340. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you if it comes to it, you know, I'll buy one and give it to you. You know, I don't care. Well, the Public See, Art Committee could afford it. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> we could just charge the Public Art Committee. Well, we can do that, too, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. well, I am going to adjourn the meeting at 3.18 p.m. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Hope this wasn't too painful, Sonia. No, it was, it was good. Thank you. Good. Yeah.